Okay, so today we're going to be looking at the experiment for Hooke's Law. It's a nice simple experiment, really easy to get good data from this one as long as we're careful and precise about the measurements we're taking. So we need to be able to take careful measurements of the length and extension of a spring as we add different amounts of force to cause it to stretch. So hang up the spring, nice and simple. The next thing in order to make sure that we measure its length accurately is that we clamp a ruler in place and specifically we're using a ruler which has no little gap at the end where there's no measurements but which starts at zero on the end of the ruler and we're going to clamp that in place and I'm going to try and make sure that I've clamped it in place so that the zero mark is level with the bottom of the spring and doing it that way means that I'm not going to have to worry about making adjustments from the readings I take off of the ruler to the results that I record in the table and that resolves one little source of potential errors where I might make a mistake and record something wrong. I'm going to lower the spring just to add so that the bottom of the coil is level with the top of the ruler and just check that they're on. Now that I've got them on a level vertically, I want to minimise the difference as much as possible so that while I've still got room to hang the masses off of the spring, I minimise this difference so that I can keep the errors from taking the readings off the ruler as small as possible. So I'm just going to move the ruler forward slightly. OK, and I think if I get any close forwards, I'm going to be getting in the way of the mass there. OK, so each of these masses that I'm going to be hanging off it has a mass of 100 grams. Now, when I record my results, I'm not going to be recording the mass in grams. I'm going to be recording the force in newtons, which means we need to convert using the equation F equals mg. 100 grams is 0.1 kilograms. Now, for the sake of this experiment, I'm going to use a value of 10 for g. So each 100 gram mass is exerting a force of one newton on the spring. So the forces, nice and simply, that I'm going to have to worry about are one, two, three, four, and five newtons. So that's a nice, simple set of uh, independent variables there. Extension, being a distance, is going to be measured in meters. So I'm going to need to make sure that I convert from the centimeter readings on the ruler into meters before I record those into my table. Converting from centimetres into metres, there's 100 centimetres in a metre, so I need to take the measurement in centimetres, divide it by 100, that's my measurement in metres, that's what will go into the table. So, if you set this up on a level with zero newtons attached, your extension is zero, that is your original length. So, all we've got to do now, add the first mass, first weight of one newton and then record making sure that you get onto eye level the extension of the spring. Now be careful these rulers have two scales one counting up on the left and one counting down on the right make sure that you are counting off the right scale so if I make sure that I get onto a level here and take this recording I have got 35 millimeters or three and a half centimeters of extension there converting that into meters Writing that in metres, I'm going to have 0 0.035 metres. I'm going to add the next 100 grams of mass, the next 1 newton of weight. That will stretch the spring further. Again, take a measurement, make sure that you get down on a level with the bottom of the spring. Now you can see here at the moment, it's just started oscillating up and down a little bit. So you're going to want to just try and stop that oscillation so that it's hanging level okay and looking at that now I've got an extension of eight centimeters okay converting that into meters that is going to be 0 0.08 meters there repeat again another hundred grams of mass another one newton stretches a bit further Stop it from oscillating up and down. Just a little bit of gentle support to do that. OK, 
Okay, just going to damp that a little bit more. Bottom of the coil now at just over 12 and a half. I'm going to call that 12.7 centimeters, 0 0.127 meters. Another 100 grams. So now up to 400 grams or 4 newtons. Make sure it's level again. Okay. Come around here. Okay, and the extension now that looks like 17.3 centimeters. Converting that, divide by 100, is that is 0 0.173. And the last one for 5 newtons of force. Okay. Just making sure that the spring there isn't catching on the clamp and being supported there because that would stop the spring from extending as much as it should. But that looks all right. And so for the last one, we've got an extension of 21.9 centimetres. Divide that by 100 and that gives a final extension of 0 0.219 metres there. So once you've done that, you can take the weight off the spring. Good little check to make sure that you haven't introduced an error into your experiment is to make sure that the spring does go back up to the zero mark. If it, you've stretched it too far by adding too much weight, you'll find that it won't return all the way to its original shape, and that means that you will have gone beyond the limit that this spring obeys Hooke's law, which is what we're trying to show with these results. So the next stage of this experiment then is just to manipulate the data, produce a graph from which we can show the relationship between the force and the extension. Drawing a graph of this data, now usually you would expect to draw the dependent variable on the y-axis. Now this time around, for the purpose of our analysis from these results, we're going to flip that. So we are going to put the force, the independent variable, onto the y-axis. So we have force in newtons on the y-axis and the extension in meters on the x-axis. Okay, so with the axes labeled, the next thing for us to do is to choose a scale. So my largest force is 5 newtons. I want to use as much of the paper as possible. So I'm going to go up using two large squares being equivalent to 1 newton. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 newtons. And then for the extension, going across my largest extension is 0 0.219 meters. So I'm going to go a little bit over that, go up in 0 0.05 meters per big square and that will take me to 0 0.05, 0 0.10, 0 0.15, 0 0.20 and 0 0.25 meters there which will go a little bit beyond. So next thing, nice and easy, plotting the points first one at 1 newton we're going to have an extension of 0 0.035 so we have 0 0.01 0 0.02 0 0.03 and then 0 0.035 meters there at 2 newtons we're going up across to 0 0.08 meters so if i go across to 0 0.1 and then back a few squares, that means that 0 0.08 meters is just there. At 3 newtons, we're going across to 0 0.127 meters. So 0 0.125 is going to be here, across to, across just a little there, and then 
going up. So there we've got 0 0.125, and then that means that there is going to be that. At 4 newtons, we've got 0 0.173. So there's going to be 0 0.175, and drag it back just a little there, so that one will go just there. And the last one, at 5 newtons, we've got 0 0.219, so there would be 0 0.2, 21, 2, 2, so 219, so two, just there for the last point. So now we've got our four, five points. We want to draw a line of best fit. Now, even though I know that with zero newtons of force, we should see the line of best fit going through the origin, lining the ruler up through all of the data points there, we get a much more accurate line of best fit if I let it go just a little bit above. So this intercept here does suggest that taking those results, we may have had a little bit of a systematic error in terms of perhaps where we measured the zero extension, so having that spring lined up with the top of the ruler properly. So now that we've got the graph drawn, give it a title, and then we're going to need to find the gradient of that line. So, finding the gradient of the line, what we need to do is draw as large a right angle triangle as we can, preferably picking a few points where the line crosses some easy to read values. So, for instance, I'm going to choose this point just here, between on the 1.5 newtons and I am going to use the point up at the top for 5 newtons there. I'm going to draw a large right angle triangle. OK, and now I need to know both the width and height of that right angle triangle there. So if I read down from there, and from here, then the extension in meters, the width of that triangle, is going to be 0 0.22 meters. And over here, we have 0 0.05. So that is going to be taking from that 0 0.0. 55 is going to be equal to 0 0.165 meters there across the height of the triangle. Doing the same process then on the other axis. Here I've got 1.5 newtons up at the top. We're going across here, and that lines up nicely with the 5 newton mark. So the height of the triangle is the difference between 5 newtons minus 1.5 newtons gives us a height of 3.5 newtons there. Then lastly, to find the gradient, we're going to divide the height of the triangle. So we're going to do 3.5 newtons divided by 0 0.165 meters. Put that into the calculator. And that gives a gradient of 21.2 newtons per meter. And that value gives us what is called the spring constant of the spring that we've used for that experiment there. Okay. That value is denoted by the symbol K, which gives us Hooke's law being the relationship of f equals k x, where x is the extension and f is the force applied. Okay. In alternative 
to using X for the extension, you can occasionally see this symbol replaced with a lowercase e, so that relationship is the same as that there.